Welcome back to SA Film Chronicles. My name is Eddie Romatale, and today we are at the Netflix Safters Toast Nominees Party. Listen, it's going to be amazing here. The sun is out, you know, Joburg is showing up and showing off. I'm going to be chatting to some of the nominated guests of the Safters, and I'm quite looking forward to it as well. And look who I'm joined by. Hello, Eddie. The beautiful Shannon Ezra. Thank you very yeah. much. How are you doing? I, I, this is not my comfort zone, Eddie. <laughs> not at all. I ran yeah. away from you. I ran away from him. <laughs> and I had to fetch her, and now she's back here with us. Yep, yep. <laughs> Please tell me, what was your reaction when you woke up in the morning and found out that you'd been nominated in the as in Best Actress in a so TV it's drama? So it's an interesting story. So I woke up in the morning and I did everything in my power to avoid the social media. <laughs> and I went on my regular daily walk and one of my directors called me and I said, I've heard nothing, I know nothing. Yeah. I said, I, I, if it's good news, if it's bad news, I don't want to hear it because there's a very small puddle where I'm walking and if, if, if it's bad news, I'm, I might have to drown myself. Yeah. And she's like, please don't do that. And I was like, I'm an actress, I'm being dramatic. Yeah. Um, anyway, the point <laughs> is, when she shared that I'd received the nomination, I, um, I cried Aww. with happiness. Yeah. And also, it was such a relief because we worked so hard on Lioness, and 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 because the the, the period of of Lioness airing to now, it felt like so long. So mm. I felt like people had forgotten about the show, oh, I see, and yeah. and I wanted people to get their due. Um, not that it's about awards or that kind of recognition, but it yeah. is wonderful to celebrate how hard people work. So it wasn't just about my nomination. When I heard that Bradley Devine had been nominated for Best Cinematography, when yeah. I heard that Amy Sprawson and Rousseau had been nominated for Make, when I heard Natasha Sutherland had been nominated for Best, when I heard Frank Reitenbach had been, it just, it just felt, I can get emotional now. So yeah. like, that's, it's, it's just, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's a wonderful and thing. And you're nominated in a, it's a very tough category here. I don't, I don't know if you've seen who you're up against. I have it's seen, I've seen, and you know what? I think at the end of the day, I think, I think to judge, you know, being able to say someone's the fastest runner, it's indicative. It's very mm. clear who the fastest runner is because there is a person who gets through the finish line yeah. faster. I don't think I don't think it's fair to say who's a better actress or who was the better performer because it's so Absolutely, subjective. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about the art. Absolutely. It's you know, I can look at a painting for instance and I can think that is rubbish and <laughs> someone else will look at it and think that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Yeah. It speaks to the individual. So for all of us in each category, for each and every actor, um, uh, cinema, anyone who's nominated. Yeah. It's just wonderful to celebrate ourselves and how hard we work. I'm joined by director, cinematographer, and also director, also and executive producer. Cinematographer, director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I did say oh, that. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> just director, just gonna, uh, director, executive, executive producer. producer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Safta nominations. You know, nominated for best yes. cinematography yourself and directing. How, yeah. and directing. How, how do you feel about that? I feel very good. I think I think I don't think that's ever happened. Do you think? No. I don't. No, I, don't I don't think I don't know if anybody's ever been nominated for directing and cinematography. So it feels pretty special. So I hope yes. I win one of them. It would yeah. be cool if I win both. It'll I'll, be amazing. I'll, it'll be amazing, <laughs> and I'll give this guy a shout out. Yeah. <laughs> and t -Bag, coming over to you, yeah. um, you know, in terms of Gomorrah and Redemption mm. being nominated, you know, what does this say to the vision and the direction of Siriti when you guys started it? Did you guys imagine that you know you would be here, um, you know, right now? That's a very good question. I mean, you know, when you build something, uh, you've got hopes, you've got ambitions, and dreams about where, what you want to do, and where the company would go. Um, the company is still very young, we're only seven years old and I think we've done remarkable work in the seven years uh, in the spaces of uh, telenovelas, drama series and TV commercials as well. So did we envision it? Yes we did to some degree but not to the scale. Yeah, yeah. and I, I want to know advice from, from the both of you because you know we've got a, a lot of young creatives, young filmmakers that look up to, 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 to you guys and I know Tabang you hosted a beautiful masterclass just a few weeks ago. Mm. What advice would you guys give to them, you know, as role models that people that look up to in the industry, about how they should, you know, go about their directing vision or their cinematography vision in the, in the industry? Well, I think for me, uh, and it's something that Zeno and I share sentiment in, like it's all about attitude, yeah. you know. I think a lot of the time we talk about hard work and dedication, but I think we forget that like having the right attitude 
will get you very, very far. Like no one wants to work with someone who's good but is not a great person. So you just like treat people with kindness. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree fully with that. You know, we actually just spoke about it in KZN and I was like, I look for people with great personalities that are, know how to be kind to the crew. That comes first for me before being talented. Yeah. How are you feeling today, sir? Good, good. It's great. It's great to be here with all these filmmakers. Yeah. And now tell me about, you know, Runs in the Family. How did that concept come about? Well, that, uh, that's a, a story that uh, came from my son. My son yeah. is the writer and also an actor in the film. Yes, yes, Gabe. Gabe, yeah. Gabe Gabriel. Yeah. He's getting more and more well known and uh, yeah. he deserves it. Absolutely. Um, and uh, he and I discussed this film during lockdown and decided we would do the film as soon as lockdown ended. Yeah. And we were very lucky. We managed to get it together. Netflix backed us up. So did NFVF and Indigenous uh, and the DTI a bit too. So yeah. we, got, we got support from all the people who give support, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, one thing I love about Runs in the Family is that, you know, South Africa is such a diverse country and yeah. it, rep it represents the diversity yeah, absolutely. With, 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 within our country as well. Absolutely. And I mean, now it's got a SAFTA nomination as yeah. well. And I'm sure like Gabe and yourself are thrilled about that. We absolutely yeah. are. You know, you know, I like to say that the film uh, represents a little bit of my Indian diaspora past and my son's uh, transgender future. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and when you talk about um, diversity in this country, I think our film represents a great deal of diversity. Yeah. And, and it, I think it's one of the themes that we need to keep on re uh, revisiting in all our films. Yeah, absolutely. And now I want to touch on, I mean, this film hasn't been nominated, but I'm sure next year it'll be nominated for a SAFTA, Death of a Whistleblower. Yeah. Um, have you had any hits uh, on you uh, for exposing <laughs> whistleblowers? <laughs> so far not. I'm feeling fine. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and I hope to continue feeling fine. Yeah. Um, it's an important subject. And I think the, the thing that um, we really were trying to expose is that uh, whistleblowers in this country who have died have often been killed by um, by, by uh, criminal, criminal movements. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, we need, so that's just something we need to explore and investigate in this country. The criminality has grown too powerful. Yeah, yeah, and we, yeah. And we need to bring it back down to size. Absolutely. And I mean, I love, I love your directing style and, you know, your storytelling. And, you know, you're someone that I, when I look at your work, I'm like, yeah, you know, you, you've, you've, you've set a bar in our industry and a standard. And yeah. I'd love for you to, Thank Please you. keep on passing on that knowledge. You know, we need more, we need better storytellers in oh, South Africa. Oh, yeah. we, we, we have so many great stories in this country. Absolutely. Um, and the storytellers are getting better and better. The filmmakers are getting better and better. We're all getting better. The, yeah. the more we do this, the better we get. So, so guys, I want you to tell me, I mean, with Spinners, it's such a genuine, true South African storytelling. You know, tell me about the journey of how did you guys come about? Like, how, how did the story come about? Um, well, I'll let Matt take this one because he was on board before me. So, I mean, initially the original, original sort of idea to do something with spinning and a kid and crime came from our producers, Benjamin and Joachim from France. And they initially actually contacted another South African director. You know how it works, and I yeah. got involved early. Yeah. Um, and we actually initially pitched a very different story to Studio Canal, oh, which got okay. green lit. Yeah. And it was when Sean joined. We had like six months to deliver scripts, and we looked at what I had pitched, and we were like, it doesn't yeah. work, it's no good. And we kind of just like decided in a rush and a panic, as COVID was striking South Africa. At, oh, so, so you guys yeah. developed it in COVID? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. January 2020. It's incredible. So we often like, like a lot of people ask like what was the inspiration and I think part of it was COVID. Like a very anxious, immediate, stressful time. Yeah. And, and that kind of like fed into our, our story choices. Yeah. And I want to come over to you Sean. You know, how does it feel being nominated in the best screenwriting um, category for four, four spinners? Uh, wonderful. I mean, to be included uh, amongst the other great writers, uh, especially on Sharka, which is obviously an incredible show. Um, an absolute honor, you know. Um, 
we, we hope we win. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm rooting for you guys. I'm not allowed to say that, but I'm rooting for you guys. You. Yeah. Sure. And let's talk about more of a, a topic that's for me to be a bit controversial. Um, with Spinners not being nominated in the best TV drama category, you know, what's your guys' take on that? I mean, what's happening inside the Spinners camp that you guys could share with audiences? I mean, I think first and foremost, obviously, we. if our disappointment was anywhere, it was for Cantona James, who's a really young, yes, really yes. talented actor. Yeah. Look, I think, obviously, we're disappointed and we would have liked more for the show, but there are a lot of shows. We don't really know the judging process fully. Um, sometimes you just got to, like... For us, the main thing is, did it land with an audience? Yeah. Uh, and it has locally and internationally. Um, so, yeah, you win some and you lose some. Yeah. That's uh, th Yeah, I think ultimately, I mean, as I tell uh, some of my students sometimes, we don't do this for the awards, right? We, we do this to move people, you know, to, to tell a story and, and affect them in some emotional way. And if we've done that and we can reach one person, for me, we, you know, yeah, we've, we've done our job. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and last question before I have to let you guys go. How, how's season two looking? Is it complete? Uh, how, how are we looking for season two? So we, there's a limit to what we can say. Uh, I can tell yeah, you yeah, that there's yeah. a story, there's scripts. Um, that, that's what we can say for now. So the writing is done for now. We've submitted, and uh, the rest is up to the movie gods. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to season two. Please get me oh, on your set. To. I'd love to be, speak to the relevant people awesome. <laughs> to get me on your set. I'll fly to Cape Town <laughs> to come and be on the spinner set. Awesome. I really love the series so much and Thank it's you. amazing to meet the guys that literally put the you know pen to paper for it. Thank you. And yeah hopefully we'll get a season three, season four moving forward.